Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome to the first episode of ICDC. First, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Drew Diaz. I'm an optician working in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm advanced certified by the American Board of Opticianry, and I'm also a fellow of the National Academy of Opticianry. I've been working as an optician for the past seven years and have developed my own unique view of opticianry and also of the eyeglass business in general. Anyway, enough about me, on to the show. It is no secret, right now the big trend in eyeglasses is vintage fashion. Uh, you're gonna see this by looks inspired from the 50s and 60s. Larger frames, bigger lenses, and chunkier profile. While it's obvious why this fashion is kind of popular right now, obviously it looks great, it's, it's kind of cool and trendy right now, uh, it helps to understand where this look came from. In the early 1900s, glasses were not a fashion statement at all. They were looked at as medical devices, and so uh, they even carried a stigma about them. Uh, people who were wearing glasses were seen as uh, meek physically and uh, kind of introverted intellectuals. However, uh, there's a comedian named Harold Lloyd who did a, a number of things and was fairly popular in his day. Um, in 1917, though, he came out with a movie called Over the Fence. In this movie, he played kind of a typical person who was, you know, middle class, and he wore the signature round horn-rimmed glasses. And because of Harold Lloyd's immense popularity and also the popularity of the film, horn-rimmed glasses really became a, a rage. And this was the first time that people were wearing glasses as a fashion statement. Horn-rimmed glasses back in the day were actually made out of horn and tortoiseshell. Now this quickly stopped because horn and tortoiseshell are very expensive to produce. They were made in plastics shortly thereafter. Now despite the popularity of this horn and glasses and this, and this craze that really uh, took a hold of people, despite the popularity of it, it kind of fell by the wayside. Plastics back then were not really very, very durable, um, and so people went away from that toward more durable metal frames. But in 1947, the brow line frame was invented. They're called brow line uh, glasses because of that thick plastic uh, along the brow. This really caught on uh, in popularity. And only a few years later, in 1952, Ray-Ban, which was then owned by Bosch and Lam, invented the Wayfarer. Now the Wayfarer really, really caught on very, very quickly because it's so easy to fit. A lot of people can wear the Wayfarer and it looks great. The recent resurgence of this is due to things like the hipster movement and shows like, like Mad Men. Typical things that you're gonna see in this kind of design are gonna be, of course, the larger lenses. You're gonna see variations of the Wayfarer. Some people are going to just duplicate the Wayfarer. Other lines that you're gonna see you're gonna do, are gonna do modernized versions of these looks. Um, and typical things that you will see in terms of design are gonna be the rivets at the corners of the frames and again, larger lenses. So this is a trend that in my opinion is going to be around for quite a while. It's probably going to change a little bit here and there, but just the vintage styling in general is going to stick around for a while. And specifically, the Wayfarer type look, uh, the brow line look, uh, these are really classic designs that are going to be around for a very, very long time. They may wax and wane in popularity, but they, will, they are here to stay, definitely. So on to our kind of medical side of this channel. I want to each episode just really quickly touch on something that's actually related to your eyes and how you see. Um, today what I want to focus on is myopia or nearsightedness. For people who need glasses, myopia is the most common condition. Um, nearsightedness basically means what it sounds like. You can see close up, but far away, you can't really see very much. Everything is, is blurry further away. Of course, there are varying degrees to myopia. Basically, how myopia happens is one of a couple things, and there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different ways that myopia can happen, but it happens most of the time this way. 
This is something that we call axial myopia. So basically what that means is your eye is a little bit too long and your and the light focuses a little bit too early. So when light enters your eye, it focuses before the retina, which is that back part of the eye, kind of like the film in a camera. That's where the light needs to focus. In a myopic eye, it's going to focus a little bit before that. How we take care of this is a couple of ways. Uh, the first and most obvious is glasses. The glasses, what they do is they manipulate the light in order to allow the light to focus on your retina. Your doctor, when they do your exam, they determine exactly how much power, how much the, this lens needs to bend light in order to get that focus right on your retina. The next, obviously, is contact lenses. It essentially is the same thing as glasses, except it just sits right on your eye. It bends light, so the image can focus directly on your retina. There are a couple other ones which are a little less common, but people know about them, like LASIK, for instance. Uh, LASIK is a type of surgery that you can do, um, which will somewhat permanently uh, correct for myopia. Another maybe less known method of correcting for myopia is called orthokeratology, sometimes called ortho-K. Um, this involves using hard lenses that you sleep in at night that reshapes your cornea so, again, light can focus on your retina correctly. Um, all of these I'll be going into more in depth in the future. I just wanted to put out there a, a couple of different ways of correcting this. So this week, our frame of the week is from a line called Etnia. This is a Spanish line that's actually relatively young. Uh, it started in about 2001. Uh, this frame called the Brighton. Uh, I have color BKTQ, which stands for black and turquoise. Um, obviously, keeping in the trend of this week, it is very obviously inspired from 50s and 60s type of designs like the Wayfair. As you can see, uh, it has almost the same shape as the Wayfair, a little bit squared off, and obviously with the colors make it a little bit more modern. So we're just going to take a look here. Take a look at the inside here, Brighton. And one of the interesting things that I really love about uh, vintage frames from uh, that from now, from more recently, is uh, the construction. Um, the interesting thing about uh, early 2000s when they started making these frames are, are, as I said before, they really only paid attention to aesthetic. So um, here you'll see the hinge there, if I get a little bit closer, uh, there's a five barrel hinge, which basically means it's really very, very strong. And you see those little dots there, essentially, those are rivets, which are actually holding the frame together. So I can kind of get a shot of the front there. You see the two dots there, and then of course, the uh, the two dots there. So these are actually holding the frame together. So these are not just for aesthetics. These are really uh, very functional. And you can see Etnia made in Spain. Uh, this frame, um, this line actually just in general, I really do like it because it is uh, considered very well made, relatively high end uh, line, but it's still priced fairly decently. Um, for this frame, you're probably going to find somewhere in the high 200s to mid 300s for this frame, which is actually a very decent price for high-end uh, glasses. And um, since I'm in D.C., I'll go ahead and put it out there. Uh, if you're in the D.C. area, you can get this at uh, Klesman and Rosenblatt's office, which is downtown D.C. Um, again, Etnia's Brighton frame. That's it for our show, everyone. Stick around. Next week, we're going to be talking about women's cat eye glasses and how the eye works, how you see. So see you next week. Peace.